This is Ember Riddle Aeronautical University, and today I'm going to give you an honest review after being here for four and a half years. I was an aerospace engineering student here and also a resident advisor. I'm going to be talking both about engineering and flight student things. So before I begin, I want to let you know that I'm not completely bashing the school, because a lot of times I'm going to be bringing up stuff that you won't know generally until you actually start attending the school. And you wouldn't be watching this video if you wanted to know what was on the university brochure. And being a student here at Ember Riddle was some of the best four and a half years of my life, and I'll talk more about that towards the end of the video. But there are some things here about the social culture and just stuff in general that you probably want to know before you actually attend the school. And I will probably get hate for this, but I could not care. Now, if you don't already go to the school, you'll be hearing about how prestigious this university is within the aviation field and how nice the campus looks itself. That is because this school's PR team, public relations, is excellent at covering up any bad news, anything bad in general, so more students are willing to come to this school in the future. Let me give you an example of how good they are. In 2019, this ex-professor is serving prison for being a predator. Oh, and so is this ex-professor and pastor in 2021. And then another student in 2021 and 2022. But you get the point. The only thing that doesn't follow the trend is the one guy who threatened to eliminate the school. And here is the library where he was going to do it on the exact same day, two years later in 2023 today. But now you understand how much actually happens at the school and it only gets out to one or two news outlets because the PR team is that good. Compared to most schools, these cases are barely anything and not really much to worry about. Now the party life here absolutely sucks. Part of it is because this school and the students are really educationally focused, which is a good thing, because otherwise this school wouldn't be as prestigious. Parties usually happen within dorms, at a frat house, or on Seabreeze. Seabreeze is a street in Daytona where the most popular clubs are, and the popular clubs include Razzles and 509. We don't really know, but some people just go there every weekend, and we call those people pathetic, because they are typically the people that have to drink to have fun and just got their freedom and want to make bad choices. Either way, you just have to be 18 to get in, and if you show your riddle ID, then the cover charge is free. Another bar and club where flight students usually go and hang out is called Flag Tav. There are a few frat houses on campus that host parties about once a month and some just don't have any houses at all. A great majority of the student population believes that if you are joining a frat that you are essentially paying for your friends by joining. The fee to join per semester from what I remember is between $600 to $800. Something interesting is one of the frats on campus was on probation with the university. I don't know what happened but they hit it well enough for almost nobody else outside of the frat to know about it. I forgot which frat it is exactly but some of the frat people I know won't even talk about it. A sorority I constantly hear as a garden host sorority is AZD, Alpha Z Delta. And I don't know if the XI is pronounced that way, so yeah, my bad. Funny part is I have been told about this from women who were in the sorority and many women in other sororities, so there's got to be an extent of truth to it. Rumors are they strongly encourage the dance with no pants with other frat guys, and they also give rewards to each other for having a higher body count. Partying in your dorm is your best and worst bet. Because if you are caught off campus somehow for underage drinking or something, you will probably get arrested and I have seen it personally happen. At least on campus in the dorms if you are caught, campus safety officers pour out all the alcohol in front of you and have some disciplinary action through the school, but you are not arrested at least. Now, there is some kind of disease that runs through this school, and this is typically within men. And it's because this school, as of 2023, is about 70% men and 30% women. It was worse before. Before I say this, you gotta know that I'm not being sexist or mean in any sort of way. I'm just telling you the exact truth and everybody who attends the school already knows about it. And this disease is called Riddle Vision. This is people that you see as fives that end up looking like tens in a few months just because you don't see anybody prettier walking around. The general population of both men and women physically are said to be in the range of mid to ugly. And yes, Riddle Vision is common both men and women. This isn't really a controversy either. So apparently the school newspaper called the Avion mentioned Riddle Vision once in the previous years. And the school did not like that so they had to remove it and issue an apology to the school. Now this is what I have heard from other students within the Avion newspaper and I didn't witness it explicitly. SA crimes on campus are extremely low but not unheard of. Usually just a few down bad creeps causing this and false accusations occur occasionally. Overall, I heard the Title IX office sucks at dealing with this and you should rather go to the police. Violent crimes are essentially none and you probably won't ever hear about it. Campus safety does publicly put the reports online so you could probably find out on their website. Overall, this campus is extremely safe and everybody walks around alone at night without having to worry. Fun fact, if you call night flight with campus safety at night, they will give you a free ride back to your dorm or wherever you are on campus. 
You know what? I think this is a good time to talk about school parking. Freshmen, stop bringing your cars to campus. You don't need it because you live on campus. This school has such a bad parking situation. Even if you bought a parking spot, there are times where you won't even find parking. And campus safety will ticket you if you don't park in the colored parking lot that you are assigned to. Probably Officer 512 because he is a menace and literally writes almost all of the tickets. They even built this whole parking garage that cost $800 for a pass and there's still not enough space. Hopefully they destroy the useless soccer fields in the red lot to build a very tall parking garage. Also, the red lot is literally just a lot with dirt and gravel on it, so good luck with your car washes. Speaking about space on campus, Riddle is a private school that is kind of greedy about money like all private schools usually are. So a few years ago, Riddle made it mandatory for the second year students to live on campus, which is bullshit. Because a good amount of rooms are tripled on campus, which means there are three people living in a single room, and this has been horrible. This wasn't the housing department's fault at all, but the university's policy. Now there are tripled rooms, angry parents and students, and over to freshmen causing this. And in case you didn't know, this school is landlocked for expansion because of the airport. Moving on to the topic of who should actually go to this school. You should go to this school for aerospace engineering, aeronautical science along with being a flight student, air traffic management, aviation maintenance science also known as AMS. You know, the things that the school is actually known for. What is stupid if you come to this school for civil engineering, applied biology, aviation business administration, and no, don't say you want to go to this school because you want to specialize in those majors within the aviation industry. There's so many better schools for those majors and you're just burning your money. Typically, if somebody is bad at flying or bad at aerospace engineering, they will switch into those majors and it's just smarter to transfer. There are cheaper and bigger schools in the area like UCF. Also, for Air Force ROTC, this school's department is one of the largest in the country, but many people don't come here just for Air Force ROTC and come for ROTC in general. And if you go on Google, you will find so many officers graduated from the school and are high-ranking military leaders. This is an excellent school to grow within the military, but do not underestimate the program. It's not easy and requires the most commitment next to your major. This is a good time to mention this advice. If you are going to be a flight student, you're fine and get your privates and do as much as you can before coming to this school because this school is very expensive per hour of flying. You can also move in and start flying here the summer before the fall semester of your freshman year begins. For aerospace engineering students, you will mostly be doing book work on aerodynamics and math and it's unbelievably hard. If you want to work hands-on, this is not the major for you and you are thinking of AMS also known as Aviation Maintenance Science. The food on campus is mostly mid. At the beginning of each semester, the food quality is doing actually pretty good. But a week later and everything just goes to shit. You will soon realize that Qdoba and Chick-fil-A on campus is absolutely trash. From the lines to the food quality to the food options being out of stock on certain days, Boundless is also not the best, but the food does not run out, so that's great. Starbucks probably has the best consistency for everything, and occasionally they do run out of items. Clubs on campus are pretty diverse, and I'm not talking about race. I strongly encourage you to try some before shutting them down, because you might end up liking them. And yes, most clubs do have their own financial dues. And if a club doesn't exist yet, then you could be the first to start it. Let's talk about the residence halls. The oldest hall is called Doolittle, but we call it Dooshittle. It's because the walls are yellow, the ceiling is low, and it looks like a prison. New Res 1 is pretty good good and does not have money problems. The walls are pretty thin and you could hear people running down the halls. Every single residence hall has horrible elevators manufactured by the same company. They break so often from people jumping and also shoving shit into the shaft for literally no reason. New Res 2 occasionally has a problem with hot water and you might not get it on time and you can also hear voices through the vent of the room over. New Res 3 is the newest hall and is the most expensive but has the best views of the airport next to New Res 2. You have your own room in New Res 3 but you still have to share a suite with three other people with a kitchen. And the hot water sometimes randomly turns cold depending on the room. The benefit about New Res 2 is that you are always next to Boundless for food in case it's raining or something. Apollo, Adam, Stimson, and Wood are good rooms but you might get tripled for roommates. O'Connor is an 8 person suite with 4 rooms of two people each. Generally not bad unless you get stuck with noisy suite mates. Shunu is the off-campus hall that has an amp problem. If you were wondering why New Res 1, 2, and 3 don't have names, it's probably because the school is waiting for a million dollar donation to name the building after someone. For example, the Mori Hosini Student Union. Hosini is a board member for multiple universities including Riddle, and one of the largest land developers in the state of Florida and that's how he got his name on the union. About half the residents on campus usually own a penny board or an electric scooter. That's just because it's faster and you want to rush the class a few minutes before it starts. Just remember that they do get stolen still, especially in front of the Lehman building since it's next to a main road. Campus safety has cameras installed and even if your stuff gets stolen in front of the cameras, they won't pull up the footage which is bullshit unless those two cameras are decoys. 
The new fitness center is really nice. The old one is now going to be the Boeing building. Problem is that it gets absolutely crowded after 4 p.m. because the class is over for most students. There are classes included like yoga, cycling, weightlifting, and set schedules. People barely use the pool, which is a good thing. You know, because literally the beach is down the street. Overall, this school is a great experience. If you are coming to the school with the passion and the right major, you are going to be going very far in life. Just the name of the school itself will get you biased in many workplaces. I made so many nice, genuine friends after I figured out the fake ones from the first year. I struggled in many classes, but when your friends are in the same struggle and they're willing to share homework answers, that is clutch. And my roommates were considerate and very nice people and ended up being my best friends. So what I learned was making genuine relationships with nice people really countered all the stress I had academically. And being isolated within yourself and being close-minded is just going to be dreadful for the next four years for you. I have so much more I could talk about, but this is all it's going to be for this video. Get this video to 10k views and I'll consider making another one on more tips. Like this video to see more random shit.